Silence is power. What's going on, church found? Welcome back to Everyday Church Life. I pray y'all are having a wonderful day. So I'm in the scripture. Proverbs 17, verse 28. Even the fool, when he hold his peace, is counted wise, and he that shut his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. To be silent in the midst of adversity is the greatest weapon we can have against the enemy. Because sometimes we can speak about certain stuff in particular situations that we might not fully understand. But guess what? When you be silent, the enemy don't have to know what you don't know. Because if you don't fully understand a situation and you start to say things that you don't know what you're talking about, the enemy will use those words against you to escalate the situation, to make it worse. That's why I don't listen to people that gossip because they on the outside looking in. They don't fully know what's going on. So that word basically said, even a fool, when he keep his peace, when he hold his peace and he keep his lips shut, he is considered a man of understanding. Don't react off of limited information. That's basically what I learned from that word. See, a lot of times what we say lets people know how to treat us. So if we engage in an argument word for word, that's what keep the conflict going. But if we learn how to be silent, when people are trying to provoke a conflict, that's how we hold on to our peace. Silence is power. And here's why. Because the more you learn how to be quiet, the less people know about you. Because sometimes our mouth is what gives people the power over us. They learn what to do. They learn how to push buttons, depending on what we say, depending on how we conduct a conversation depending on how loud we become. And here's another thing. Silence is power, but oftentimes the loudest one in the room is the weakest because they feel as though they have to prove themselves. They feel as though they have to let everybody know what they're doing and how they are as a person. Whenever you got to explain to people who you are as a person, that's what made people not believe you. But when you don't try to explain who you are and just doing the will of God and you just letting stuff go, people learn how to respect you more because you're not letting their ignorance bring you out of character. You keep your integrity when you remain silent. And sometimes we do have to speak up, but there's always a time and place for that. It's some stuff we don't even have to defend because all we got to do is give it to the Heavenly Father and he'll fight for us. So that's why silence is power. Because the more quiet you are, the less people can figure you out. Therefore, making it harder for the enemy to devise a plan against you because you're not reacting to certain situations the way they thought you would. And that's spiritual growth. Another reason why silence is power is because when you don't share your goals with other people, the more likely you are to achieve what you've been working on. But the moment you start sharing your goals with others, that's giving them the opportunity to speak against what you was trying to achieve. So it becomes a huge hindrance for you. And over the course of time, you start losing interest or unmotivated to keep going. That's why I say let your work speak for itself because everyone don't have to know what you got going on. So if you remain silent during the process, by the time people find out, you would have already accomplished a goal that you was working on. So people don't have time to talk against it because you did more work, less talk. The words say in Matthew 6, verse 3 through 4, but when thou does alms, let not thy left hand know what the right hand doeth, that thy alms may be in secret, and the Father which see in secret himself shall reward thee openly. When you contribute your time and effort with helping others, and you don't sound the trumpet by letting everybody know all that you have done, the words say God will reward you openly. 
because you kept it a secret. Because at the end of the day, it's all about giving our Heavenly Father the glory with all the opportunities that we may have. See, a lot of times when people put what they have done on display so everybody can see it, it's almost like you're still in God's glory. Because the people ain't going to praise God. They're going to praise you because they see what you have done. But when you give that glory back to the Heavenly Father and you keep it between you and the Heavenly Father, God will reward you. He rewards our faithfulness. See, I also want to say this. Silence can be powerful in many ways because it also can preserve our lives. See, when we start talking about every single thing about our lives, we're playing into the devil's hand because he wants us to be loud about everything. He wants us to boast and brag. He wants us to talk about the stuff that we may have received. He wants us to make every single thing about ourselves. That's a form of pride. And the reason why the devil wants us to be self-centered, selfish, is because when pride fills your heart, that's what causes the Heavenly Father to turn his back on us. So we got to be careful how we speak about our blessings. Because if it's not edifying somebody in the spirit, if it's not glorifying the heavenly father, if it's not building the kingdom of God, then it's not of God and it's not for us because we are a part of God through Christ. See, the more loud we become with the stuff of this world, the more anxious we become in our spirit. And when you start telling everybody your business, that's how you create a target on your back. That's why the enemy wants you to be loud. He wants you to be the opposite of silence. Because when you speak about everything that you have and you make everything about yourself, that's what creates jealousy in people's heart. And they start to want your stuff. What the words say, the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. And the quickest way he does this is to get you to speak, to get you to boast and brag, to get you to put everything that the father wants to give you out on display. So he entered into the hearts of people that start becoming jealous and all this kind of stuff. And now they're after you. Because you allow the enemy to implant the seed of pride in your heart. And what the words say, God turned his back on the prideful. So now, because we was boasting and bragging and being prideful, we don't have the shield of protection around our lives that God will provide. Because we stepped out of his presence. So the people that became jealous that the enemy entered into their heart and minds, he's able to use them to get closer to us. The enemy wants to trick us out of our positioning with the Heavenly Father. That's why silence is powerful. Silence is power. So the moral of the story is this. Don't let the devil trick you out of your position by causing you to mate too much noise. See, the noise is going to be made, but it's a joyful noise when we give God thanks for everything we have. Silence is power because the less people know about you, the more you can accomplish. And when you remain humble in the presence of God, he will exalt you in due time. Let silence speak louder than your word. That's your secret power. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all. Hey. Hey, buddy. <laughs> People been asking about you. Sparkle. People been asking about you.
Hey, what you eating? What you eating, Sparkle? Grass. Show me some love, Sparkle. Sparkle. There you go. Oh, call this old camera too. Oh, you famous. You famous. <laughs> <laughs>